Are you guys today we're gonna start with um, congruency congruency is um, to prove that two triangles are exactly the same size and um, measurements and everything the homework you have to do is um, activity 3.4 page 1 2 3 and only numbers 1 3 and 4 the um, um, other work we're gonna do um, then next week um, the Sing simil similarity, sorry, <laughs> I couldn't get to the word. Similarity, this is congruency. We indicated by three equal signs in between the two triangles numbering. Now, what I want to show you quickly is that if you have got two different um, triangles, they are exactly the same when you can fit. I'm going to start with these two when you can exactly fit them on top of each other. Now it doesn't matter how they give you the, the orientation of the two triangles. If I can move them and they fit exactly on top of each other and they form one triangle, they are congruent. So that means they are exactly, exactly the same. They can give it to you in different ways. They can give it to you like this in this sketch and then they ask you, are those two congruent? They can give it to you like this. Are they congruent? And whatever other orientation they can, they can give it to you. So um, don't be fooled by the way they are turned. If I'm looking at these two, they are also congruent to each other because if I can fit them on top of each other, they exactly are the same. All right. So they are also congruent to each other. So that one just starts there from um, 0 to 60 and that one starts there from 0 to 50. That's why they don't look the same if you just look at the measurements because they are indicated differently here. Yeah. What they can do is they can put the two triangles like this. Now if you have to prove that they are congruent, this is one of the characteristics you can use in your um, reasons and this is the um, it is the joint side or the um, same side because this line is part of this side and it is part of this side so we can say this is a joint side that's why this side is equal to this side because it is joined by both the triangles so that is one of the things you can use when you are proving these two triangles congruent to each other. Now, there's something that I quickly want to show you. Um, there was a construction, say maybe we've got a uh, seven centimeters and we want to construct a triangle and I say I've got this side is seven centimeters and I have got an angle here of 40 degrees. Now 40 degrees is there so it's 10, 20, 30, 40 days, 140, but this side is 40. I can make that side as long as I want. What I show you is if I have only those two as information, I can actually make a triangle from here with that side any length if I don't specify something else in that triangle. Now what I mean by specifying something else, if I specify that angle, I can only do this type of triangle. So if I want to draw a second triangle, I can use an angle, an angle and the corresponding side. And then I will be forced to make a triangle that is just as big as this one that I've just made. Another thing that you can specify is the length of that side. So if I want to make a triangle like this, I'm going to specify that side. So say maybe that side is three and then I'm going to make it exactly up to there. Then it is three and that one is seven centimeters. So if I'm making a second triangle with those three specifications. I don't have a choice than making a bigger triangle exactly as what I've made here because I've got three things that specify the six possible values. Remember there's three corners and there are three sides. So there are three sides and three angles that can specify the size of my triangle. So if I have got three of those things in the right combination equal to another triangle's 
three, the same combination. I don't have a choice. The true triangles are going to be congruent to each other. They are going to be the same triangles. Now the four um, things that we can prove in combination to each other is listed here. It's side, side, side. So if I have got all the sides equal to each other, then I will have those two triangles congruent. It's not angle, angle, angle. Okay, that's something different. The side, 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 if those three things are equal from the one triangle to the other triangle, they will be congruent. The other one is side, angle, side, and that is the one we've done here. Is side inclusive angle and the other side. So it must be the angle making of the two sides making that angle. Those three in that combination are represented like this. It's a side, an angle, and a side. The other one is two angles and a corresponding side. That is the one I showed you here with two angles, this angle and say the top angle, and then one of the other corresponding sides. I'm not going to change this side to that side and then think they're going to work out. So it must be the corresponding um, angle, angle, side in both the three triangles. Then I will also make two triangles that are the same. That is represented by that. The other one is if I've got a right angle triangle. Now right angle triangle is this one. The three things there that should be equal is my right angle, my hypotenuse, it's that side, hypotenuse side, and either one of those two. If I specify the long one, I am forced to make such a triangle exactly the second one that is as big as the original one. The same if it's these sides, it's got to be my right angle, it's got to be my hypotenuse side, but it could also be my other shorter side making my right angle. So if either one of those sides are um, specified with my hypotenuse, they will be the same. If I use my right angle and those two sides, I'm not allowed to use hypotenuse um, as a reason. I have then to do the side angle side. Then it would be side angle side readings for those two to be um, congruent to each other. So make sure you um, use one of these four um, reasons why you say the two triangles are congruent to each other. If you prove them congruent 100% correctly but you use the incorrect reason then your answer would be wrong unfortunately. So if we look at this um, example that I've started here this side is going to be my statement and this side is going to be my reason why I am saying what I am saying. So normally by now you should know we are going to specify or, or start out like this. Then I first have to specify to which um, two triangles am I working in. So you have to say in triangle ABC, ABC, the sequence is not really that dead serious, but if you do make it in sequence, some other things will be easier. But I'm going to say and triangle, um, let's try and keep them the same. It is C, E and F. So in this triangle and that triangle, I'm going to make the following statements and I'm going to give a reason why I say that. This one is easy. Everything is given to you. So we're going to say B is equal to angle E because it is given. So that's my reason why I do that. And that is a angle. The next one that is given is AB, that side is equal to CE, C, E, because their values are the same. It can be indicated by the little lines as well. And that's also given, sorry, it's an I, and that is a side. And the other side is V, C. I keep this one the same, that triangle, and those values I keep the same to my second triangle. Then I, it's just nice and neater, and then it, I won't get confused. B, C is equal to E, F, or F, E. It doesn't matter, and that's another side. 
So the reason why I do that is given. So now, can I say that these two triangles are congruent to each other? I used an angle side, side. So I used a side, an angle, and a side. And yes, it is the enclosed angle on both the triangles that I've used. So now I can say, ah, oh, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle C, E, and F. And why can I say that? Because I have used that um, uh, conditions. That's the word. It's a side, inclusive angle, and the other side. So there, I've done it. I've proven that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CEF because there's an um, angle side side and it is the inclusive angle because those two sides that I've used is the one that is enclosing the angle. And no, I did not specify that that was a right angle. Maybe they are, but I can't use it if it's not given. So make sure, and oh, the sequence you prove them here doesn't need to be exactly the same as the reasons we state here. Make sure that you have done all the conditions here, proven it from both the triangles, that they are the four conditions. And if one of the sequence of conditions is met, I can make the statement that the one triangle is congruent to the other triangle because I have used those conditions to prove and sometimes um, you it's not as easy as given 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 sometimes you have to prove it by maybe making use of parallel lines or um, isocellus isocellus there that triangle whatever methods you have to prove that something is equal to something else in the other triangle just as long as your reasons correspond with the um, statement you have made and that you've made either one of those possible four conditions and you have to write them here. Why can I say they are congruent? Because I have met one of these four conditions. So um, you can use this as an example. There are some other examples as well in the in the textbooks that you can look at. Um, homework please. Um, try and have it finished tomorrow. I'll put the homework on tomorrow afternoon because I'm a little bit late today with the, with the work. And then on Monday we will start again with uh, um, similarity. Um, then we can continue with the other work. Please check that you have done your previous homework and um, please um, do the work yourself because if you're not going to do the homework yourself you won't be able to do your test yourself. Thanks guys, see you or hear from you or speak to you again on Monday, maybe tomorrow. Bye.